Let me hide. 
the cross, you paid the debt I owe, broke my chains, freed my soul, for the first time I had hope, thank you Jesus for the blood of life, Whoa!
never not sensed before. The blood of Jesus is calling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. stand for the reading of the word second kings chapter six and we read verse six and it says as follow and the man of god said where fell it and he showed in the place and he cut down a stick and cast it in thither and the iron did swim the important thing is that and the iron did swim may the lord add a blessing to his word you may be seated In this morning word, it talks about an axe. And we know axe made of metal. It fell into the river. And a man of God came and he did his thing. And that axe was able to float. This morning, I want to adapt this to our lives. There is application for us today. And it's good to know that God specializes in things that seem impossible. Praise the name of the Lord. But just to give you a little background on what has happened or what transpired. It says in verse 1, the sons of the prophets. It means that there were prophets in training. There were like a Bible school. They were going to Bible school. Said unto Elijah, behold, now the place where we dwell with thee is too straight for us. It means it began too small. It's beginning to cramped up. So they wanted more space. So they said, let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered, go ye. And one said, be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them, and when they came to Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And a man of God said, Where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down a stick, and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. Praise the name of the Lord. The question is, have any of you ever been in a spiritual slump? Been in a rut? It seems sometimes your prayers are not being answered. It seems to be bouncing off the ceiling. Sometimes you begin to get grumpy and even relating at home, you know, you're, you're grumpy with everyone. Sometimes you even foster hate, you know, and dislike for people. That is a time when we can lose our edge. That is a time when we have lost our cutting edge. And we need to find back that edge quickly so that God can effectively use us for his purpose. This morning, I want to share about you about retaining your cutting edge. Okay? Retaining your cutting edge. If you look at the term cutting edge, it means that you're at the forefront of technology. You're leading in that area. If you see this car is at the cutting edge of technology, that means that this car probably is self-driven and got all different type of features. That means it is above all the others. That's what that is in the natural. 
But this morning, I'm talking about the spiritual ramifications whereby you can lose your cutting edge. Maybe some of you are saying, well, you know, the demands of the church is too much. The demands of the Bible are too much. As a matter of fact, the demands of what God is asking us to do is too much. I want to tell you now that this is not the time to relax. Once I'm ready to say this is not the time for holding on, it's time for being strong. You have to be strong in this day and age because we have a lot of fallacies that are coming up now. They were dumb up before, but they are taking a lot of precedence now because people now are, they, 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 they are coming to a generation that do not know the Lord. Not only know the Lord, but they don't really care anything about the Lord. They give you that impression. But we all know that when our body is racking in pain or when a situation comes in our lives, that is the time we remember the Lord. We want to do as we feel like and do all of these things without remembering that it is God who has granted all things and make all things possible. We neglect the word of God, which is truth, and we go over things that are, we call suppositions. You suppose that this is what happened. There is no proof. You know, sometimes we watch movies and you see these reenactments of animals that live years ago. You know, they have the fossil right, but you know, the structure is in their imagination. And they imagine a lot of things, and when you watch these documents, it will give you the impression that they were there. You know what I mean? And we believe that thing. Which is just things based on, on, on not, only, not evidence, but supposing this and supposing that, theorizing thing. But we have the word of God, which his, history has always proved existed. The proof is in the eating of the pie, the eating of the pudding. And we know that these events occurred. Some people say that they are myths. But when they go and find these cities... Then their, their minds start to open and say, maybe the Bible is true. For example, in the case of Sodom and Gomorrah, when the scientists examined the area, they found that the, it isn't only soil, but the gravel and all of the material on the earth there, it had been subjected to immense heat as though it was a nuclear reaction. And for those who understand these things about science, Nuclear reactions are very devastating. For those who check history, that is what the Americans used to stop the war with Japan. Japan had this idea that they want to be a world force. They want to be dominant in the world. And they recognized, well, first of all, they have to get the Americans out of the way. Because the Americans symbolizes democracy and peace. All right? People will tell you all different propaganda. But had not for the Americans and the British, we would be speaking German voice and diet and things like that. We wouldn't know English. We wouldn't know what that is or nothing like that. We wouldn't be speaking that. Praise the Lord. So we thank God for them. And we see that the Americans got a man, Oppenheimer, to design the atomic bomb. And it's very destructive. They test it in the Salt Lake. So this is Utah. It's a vast expanse of desert. Just desert. Nothing lives there. It's just salt. And they tested, and that is so destructive. Praise the name of the Lord. That is why it isn't a good thing to have nuclear reactors or nuclear energy in the Caribbean. Because the minute that one of them goes bad, the whole Caribbean is gone. It in us must, it in maybe that is what will happen. It is so destructive. In Russia, they had a way called the Chernobyl disaster. One of the nuclear reactors, you have to keep them cool and on a certain temperature. And it was what we call a meltdown in scientific terms. And nobody lives in that part of the continent. The continent is covering the whole Caribbean. The only thing that lives there are the wild animals. And the animals, they have radi radiation. There's certain mutations taking place in them. That is sort of the destructiveness of nuclear um, energy. You see? And I was saying now to the story in Sodom and Gomorrah, when they found that evidence, they said only a nuclear reaction can take place, praise the name of the Lord. And if you read the word of God, you will realize what happened, where the fire came from. You can call it all different types of name. It is recorded in the word of God. 
Remember, a lot of these terms only design come up lately. Like people will come and tell you as though they are they're feeling fine. Dinosaur is not mentioned in the Bible. But when I checked, it was a thing in 1841 that a British scientist come up with the main dinosaur, which means a big lizard, a, a destructive lizard. So these words didn't exist. But sometimes we get so confused, you see. If we have a lack of knowledge, we will perish. Praising of the Lord. So we need to understand what is going on. People will put all different things in your head to try to swear you. But I just want to declare this morning, the word of God is true. Sunday and tomorrow, there is evidence that it was an intense heat of a destruction that took place there. That is proof of the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Another one thing the scientists did was to test the theory of the walls of Jericho. And they did all type of things. And they say it was an implosion. What that fancy word just means that things fall into itself. All right? But that is nothing new. That is the same technology that they use in this day and age to bring down building. We had the NIS building in town. How you think that came down or the Hilton, old Hilton Hotel? The do implosion, so it fell in. An explosion means it will scatter out. And there's a lot of destruction called. Then you have a lot of missiles and fragments and sharpness all over the place. But implosion, it falls in. But that's what the Bible tells me, that the people walk around the walls of Jericho and they're singing. And then they start to blow the trumpet, praise the name of the Lord. And what happened? The walls cave in. Say so nothing new, you understand me? So you need to read a word and hear what people say. But we know in this day and age, people like recognition. People like to know whether they have their name next to something. They like BEs and DRs and all of these other names. I ain't worried about that. I got A and too. It's F A N F A nurse. You know, I'm good for that. So you can get something in your name too, all right? Don't worry about those things. But people are looking for those recognition and not remembering that we, all of our help, it comes from the Lord. All of our help is from the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, I just want to bring up a point here. These sons of prophets, as I said, they were Bible school students. All right? This guy in particular that had the ass, that lost the ass, he wasn't doing anything that was wrong. You hear what I Because sometimes there's some people that teach us or we are taught that if things are happening bad in your life, that means you're doing something wrong. Some preachers preach that. I don't know where you get that from. You know what I mean? It's psychoanalysis and uh, operating and make you, you know, be subservient to them. That's all it is, messing with your mind. But no, 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 no. So along while you are in this world, you are under the effects of sin. You are under the effects of this world. A couple years back, we have COVID-19 that prevalent in the world. And we were, all of us were affected in some way. Because we are in this world. It didn't mean that you do something wrong. No. So we need to understand the word of God. Praise God. So this fellow was not doing anything wrong. First of all, the sons of the prophets, they are wanted to do something, to get out of their confined, restricted space. And then their resolve, which means to firmly determine to do something. To go to the river Jordan to cut down wood and obtain material to use for building. Now we look at the river Jordan. There is something significant about the river Jordan. History will tell us that it was not the cleanest river, for sure. Everything seemed to fall into the river Jordan. But it also has some spiritual significance. Because if you look through the Bible, the river Jordan is viewed as a turning point on the way to freedom. Especially for the Israelites. It is a symbol of hope. It symbolizes the river of life. And it literally means to flow down or descend. So there's something significant about the river Jordan. Now I'm going to tell you, don't liken the river Jordan to what we have here. I think we have a constitution river. Yeah. And a youngster 
people I don't know what their intentions were. They used to throw coins inside the river. And there were young fellows who used to dive for those coins. And that means the whole bus stand, that area is flooded with people looking and experiencing this adventure. Yeah, that's what they, they used to do at the time. And we know that river was not in the, the best condition because all the muck, everything would flow in to that river. It was a river like that, River Jordan, that also Naaman also had to dip in. Because he mentioned, you mean, you mean, you got some of the clean rivers, both the place, and you sending me to dip in here? Sometimes we are like that, you know? But he remember the, great, the good part, and he remember, you know what? Nevertheless, I will obey. And he went and did. I believe when he get by the second time, you will say, man, look, this is a lot of foolishness. If it was some of us, you say, man, like, we are saying my time, man. This is three times, nothing ain't happened. But in God's, God is always teaching us things. In this case, he was teaching him humility. It was teaching, teaching him patience. It was saying that you can't rush the hand of God. You know that? You can't rush the hand of God. You have to wait on Jesus. You have to wait on him. And we see Naaman persevered until he get to the seventh. And we are told in the scripture that seven is a number that God associates with completeness. It is finished. So after the seventh time, we see that his leper was white as snow. Recently, I was reading an article. They said they're having like a one case in the Caribbean now and a one case in another island. So it seems that seems to show in its head again. But we want to declare this morning that these diseases will not affect us. We want to declare this morning that we are about our father's business. The disease will not affect us. We want to declare this morning that the name of the Lord is to be worshipped. We are doing right in your sight, Lord. So we declare, Lord, that you will keep these things, this harm away from us. That's all we can do. Trust in the Lord. Do I have any witnesses this morning? Oh, praise the name of the Lord. That is what we need to declare. Praise the name of the Lord. So we see the river Jordan is a symbol of hope. A symbol of a turning point on the way to victory. Another thing these sons of prophets did was that they invited the man of God. Oh, praise the Lord. That should be a lesson of, to each and every one of us. And everything we say or do, always invite the presence of God with us. Praise God. Elisha represented the presence of God. You know that? He was a very powerful man. Remember, he had a double portion of his mentor. His mentor, Elijah. Elijah said, well, if you see me when I go, you should get a double portion. And that ain't nothing easy. And we know later on, if you read the life of Elisha, you see the things that he had to, to do and endure. He needed that double portion. So Elisha represented the presence of God. And the sons of the prophets, they got it right. They made sure they invited the presence of God. So always make sure that you have the presence of God with you. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Another thing they did was that they continue. It means that it was ongoing, still happening, in acquiring the material for the process. But during all of that there, the axe head dropped off and fell into the river. The thing about it, sometimes we can lose things. You agree with me? It doesn't mean that you do something wrong. You know that? But sometimes it's also that we are careless too. You know? Right. For example, let me give you an example. I only put my car keys one place. Because as I said, I don't have a good memory like a lot of you all. So I put my keys one place so that when I'm ready to leave, it is there. But some of you have such good memories. You put the keys all over, and when you're ready to leave, you can't find the car keys. You can't actually leave the house. You can't do nothing like that. But my memory is not as good as yours, so I can't do that, right? I have to put it one place that when I come, it is always there. And if it's not there, then I start thinking I only have one thought. But you have to go through a million thoughts now where this key is, where this key is, where it all over you. I remember a case where a person lost the key, the keys to the house. They can find it, right? 
But I think it was in a chair or something like that under the, fell under the cushion of the chair like that. These are serious things, you know. So you can lose things, praise the name of the Lord. I remember a time I lost my wedding ring. Some people say, yes, the pastor lost the wedding ring. Now listen, I wasn't trying to get out of the marriage, okay? Just we understand that, okay? Because there are many stories of both parties when they want to get out of a situation, they say that the ring lost. It's gone on the toilet drain or something like that. I wasn't trying to get out of the, the uh, marriage or anything like that. I remember I was doing a job, and at the end of that job, I didn't remember anything, but by the next time when I, day when I checked, I didn't have my ring. And for months of went on, I could not find the ring. All right? So I didn't get the nerves I, or anything like that. I didn't went crazy or anything like that. Months after, probably nearly up to a year, then I, I bought another ring. And I got it blessed again because it was the wedding ring, okay? And I got it blessed. And then like six months afterwards, I went to do a job. And I had to be on a ladder, praise God, doing some electrical work. And while I was there working, a strange phenomenon I experienced. Because here I was, I had, my ring was tight on my finger and still my ring was loose. And I said to myself, this is strange. How could your ring be tight on your finger and still loose at the same time? You know what happened? The ring that I lost was in the glove. So when I put it in my hand, it slid right back on for the ring finger, and it was loose. So I had my new ring and my old ring now, and I said, wow, look at that. That's how I found the ring. You mean that? So I have two rings, praise the name of the Lord, all right? So that let you know that I'm not getting out of this marriage, okay? I have two rings, praise God, hallelujah. So we can lose things, all right? So, so far, no one has come to me and tell me they have lost their ring. So that means that you're doing well in your marriage, right? Praise the name of the Lord. God is good, no? Look how God do things, no? In that man, a, a whole year, that ring was in the glove waiting for that occasion. All right? So the, the thing is, you need to be patient. Because some of us, it's like this thing, you're ready to catch your nerves. And you know, if some of us, on our, uh, some of us, different genders, we hang our, our attitude on our sleeves. So when something is wrong, the whole world has to know. You know what I mean? Sometimes our body, you know, we transform our bodies. Sometimes we contortion our bodies. Sometimes we do it with our faith. Everybody got to know something is wrong. But we see in this Bible, all this man did, when he realized he lost his ass, was contact the man of God. Okay? Contact. We didn't have social media. We didn't have social media at the time. So you know he had to run to find the man of God. And he did what he had to do. Praise the Lord. If it was had social media, some of us would have started dictating all the details that went on and got videos and all of these things because we want to get views. You know what I mean? We want to get views. But that ain't what happened at the time. The focus was different. This man was in a desperate situation because he had lost the axe. Now, there's also something significant about this axe because in Bible days, Metal was very rare. It was very precious. And then to have a metal ass, that was even more rare. But that's only that. But secondly, it was borrowed. You understand that? You know what the sort of situation that man in? It was borrowed. Has you all ever been in a situation where you borrowed something and then you lost it? I got a story to tell you. Right? The names have been protected to protect the innocent. All right? The name of this person is a Thelston, okay? Some people didn't get it. All right. Some people get it. Well, sometime back, well, about 10 years ago, I had to register a vehicle at MTW. So the insurance had expired. The vehicle was now adding to the fleet. So therefore, you can legally drive on the road without any number plates. So I went to a garage because I know the people and I have a good rapport with the people. And I talked to the the, the, um, that would be workshop manager in there tell me, tell her, I need to borrow some, those plates. What's the name of the, um, right, garage plates, praise God. And he was a little hesitant at first, but I plead my case to him. And he said, okay, I'm going to give you the garage plates. 
Anybody know a garage player that they are magnetic, right? It's just my, and you can fold them together. You just stick them onto the vehicle. So I borrowed this, those magnetic plates. I put it onto the vehicle, praise the name of the Lord, and I proceeded to go and get my registration. And then I remember going by my mom the night time with the same garage plates. Praise God. I had Darren with me at the time. I did what I had to do there, and then I came home. When I came home, I always make a habit to check the vehicle as I close and check around the house. When I look, one of the magnetic plates was missing. And then again, some of you over to catch your nerves again, right? Some of you will be flustered, blood pressure going through the roof, you know what I mean? You got to call the hotline, call the doctor, except calling Jesus. Some of us will start wondering where this thing could go on, and you would start to have all different thoughts going through, and you're holding your head. I just calmly told Darren, I'm sorry he's not here to witness. I tell him, well, uh, only the Lord can help me at this stage. So I had to drive at night time where the visibility is not good, retrace my steps to see if I can find. I ain't driving like the uh, rocking engine, you know. You ain't driving slow, you're driving reasonable because otherwise you'll spend the whole night there. And I drive in and I look into what look maybe look like a, a magnetic plate. I can find nothing that flat that spread out. But I remember when I get near to Small Ridge, I saw something at the side of the road. But it could only be God. As I said to God, only you can help me. I needed a miracle. You ever been in a situation like that? Only a miracle could help me. And we saw something like this. We paused and we went, look. It was the garage plate there full up at the side of the road. In my strength, I could not find that. In my strength, I could not find that. But you know, that was a big relief. Because the next day, I carry back the plates. I didn't waste no time. Get back the plates. They were borrowed. So there's something significant about when you borrow things, all right? Borrow things is not easy, you know. Sometimes you get tricked too, you know that? I remember when I was living in Edie Village, there was some work to be done, and I wanted to, to spray some grass. But we didn't, we didn't, have, I didn't have any spray can. I heard that one of my neighbors had a spray can. So I went to the neighbor. And he bought the spray gun. He told me it's not working. He got this problem. He didn't know what to do. All right. And you know what all foolish me? I always like to fix everything. So I go and buy the parts. And that was the side and fix it. And I spray. I say, good. I get things working. I'm able to do some more work on Monday. By Monday morning, bright and early, the neighbor come for spray can. Because he saw it working. So you know what? He tricked me. He tricked me. He tricked me. All right. So... That is quite all right. Praise the name of the Lord. So those things are life lessons that I learn in time. Get your own spray can, all right? So I do that. So be careful when you borrow things, all right? You can run yourself in trouble. Praise the name of the Lord. But we see in this situation now, the guy he had borrowed, so I can understand how he felt. Praise the name of the Lord. But I just want to let you know that there is hope. Praise the Lord. When we have lost our cutting edge. There is hope. In order to restore our cutting edge, first of all, you got to admit that you lost your cutting edge. First, you got to admit. So the first thing the guy ran to the spiritual legion and said, well, look, I have lost my ass. I have lost my cutting edge. As believers, we need to do that. Don't look to blame others. Don't protect Look for excuses or pretend that nothing ain't happened. Some of us, if the axe fall in there, we will look around. So, we don't ever look up to the Lord Almighty, you know. When we look around, we continue normal as though nothing didn't happen. You know that? And, and then we're probably going to put back the handle close there that nobody will see. You know, that some of us will do that. But this guy, he, as the word said, he fessed up. He recognized he had made a mistake, or rather, an incident happened, and he went straight to the man of God. The thing is, but when you lose your cutting edge, certain things can happen to you as well. There's something called a thermometer, which measures the temperature. If the temperature gets hot, it rises. If it gets cold, it goes lower down. Some of us don't like to face the music. And when we face the music, our thermometer either goes up or it goes down. 
In other words, it either, when it goes down, you get a lot of bitterness. When it goes up, you appreciate the joy. I want to let you know, let your spiritual thermometer be neutral. Okay? Be neutral. Take the lesson from this guy. When he ran himself in trouble, what did he do? do? He went straight to the man of God. All of our help comes from the Lord. Because he supplies all of our needs, he cares about us. Isn't good to know that we got a God like that? Oh, praise God. All of our help, it comes from the Lord. I am going to introduce a term here called prison singers. Some of you all would have never heard that before. Prison singers. I think I'm qualified to speak on singing since I conduct a lot of choirs and practice a lot of choirs. Some of us are like prison singers sometimes. I don't know if you can get this. They are behind a few bars and never have the right key. I wonder who get that. You are behind a few bars. The musicians will get that. And you never have the right key. You are prison singers. Anybody know anyone like that? Don't identify them, please. So. Okay? Some of us are like that. Maybe you are that way. But nevertheless... We are encouraging the word of God to speak to one another in what? In psalms and to hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making music with your heart to the Lord. So we, the modern church, have the right example. We sing hymns, we sing psalms and spiritual songs. Some congregations, they sing only spiritual songs. They don't sing hymns, they don't sing sing. But we ad adhere to what the word of God is singing. And so we do all of these things, all right? Sometimes we lose our cutting edge and don't even know that we have lost our cutting edge. So then we come to church, and because we have been church trained, we know how to raise our hands. We know how to, to, to relate with the congregation of the church so that nobody will be suspicious. Yeah? But just let me know, the word of God covers that as well too. You're not the first that that has happened to the word of God tell me it was a man by the name of Samson, a judge. Praise the name of the Lord. Excuse me. Thank you. We are told that Samson, first of all, he was encouraged not to mix himself in that company and he gone. And he used those infamous words, for she pleased me well. Right? I know a lot of men that the words have come back to bite them as well too, right? Women as well too, for they're pleased as well. And we see in this case, Samson suffered because Delilah says, Samson, wake up, the Philistines are upon you. And he get up like normal feeling that he can go and shake off. And he did not realize that the presence of God had left him. So sometimes there's not a thermometer reading. Sometimes there's no indication because we like a lot of dramatic things. But because of our life living, the Spirit of God has left us. So then we are in trouble. We have no support then. We have no protection. We are therefore exposed to the world. We are exposed to Satan. And that is truly a tragic sight when your heart is not in it. When your heart is not in it, you stop taking risks. You stop being concerned. You stop caring for things. Your vision shrinks. Well, a lot of people's heart are not in the things. They're, not inter they're just interested in maybe just coming to do a program or whatnot. But just want to let you know your heart must be in the right place. Your heart must be in the right place. And the only way that that heart can be right is when you admit to God that you have lost your cutting edge. I'm going to hurry up just now. The second thing in restoring your cutting edge is that you must acknowledge where you lost your cutting edge. Elijah asked him where did it fall and the man pointed out the exact spot. That means that that man was honest and he was specific. And it so is with God that when we have lost our cutting edge, we also need to go to the exact spot where we've lost it. We need to be honest. And we need to be specific 
with where we have lost our spiritual passion. We need to be honest to God. But I know all of us, we experience things that sometimes. Sometimes we are badly hurt. Sometimes our heart has been broken. Sometimes it can be disease that has been racking through our body. Or sometimes we are burdened with debt, too much debt. So sometimes these things can have effect on us because we are still human. Don't let anybody try to take away that you are not human. We are not superhuman. The superhuman happens in the movies, right? When you do computer-generated images, you don't real acting goes on, blue screen, and just you hold up a hand like that, and the computer generate a whole background behind you and a weapon in your hand and all things like that. You know, we are not superhuman. Okay, if you remember the story on Mount Carmel, the prophet, you know what? He, he challenged the prophets of Baal and said, what? Why you soak all of this altar full of water? And we all know that water and fire do not work. Wherever there's water, fire does not exist. And he was able to perform that great miracle. But by the next day, he get a call, he get a message. I don't know he got that message so fast. There wasn't WhatsApp then, it wasn't social media, you know. But he got the message that Jezebel said, I come in for you, I can take your life. And then the human factor kick in. He had done all of this marvelous art in the name of the Lord. And he took flight for his life. We are humans. Things will happen in our life. And I was told someone already, Elisha didn't have a minibus. He didn't have a ZR. He didn't even have a 750 or 1,000 motorcycle. But he covered a lot of miles, man. The man that swore that he covered. He covered miles, man. He would have made any Olympic team. All right? Remember, this is the same man who was able to run horses, you know. Right? So the man had good pedigree. And he made sure that he used it to good his advantage. So therefore, in the natural things will happen in our lives. So we will respond as human. All right? So these things would happen. So don't get annoyed or get too flustered. Once you are in the will of God, God would come to your aid. And you see, it happened with Elisha. God said, what are you doing? What are you doing here under this tree? What are you doing here? You know, you shouldn't be here, you know. But God had a purpose for him. Praise the name of the Lord. So God has purpose for you as well. God has purpose for you. And the final thing in restoring your cutting edge is that you, you need to acquire your spiritual edge, your cutting edge. You need to want it. You must want it. That's right. A lot of people expect things to just come and fall into their laps. No. You know what I mean? You want a job. If you stay there and say, well, the Lord can provide a job. But you are right. You are right. What the word is? For a job interview or nothing like that. You did not application. But it depends on the Lord. Send out your application. Give the Lord something to work with. You hear what I say? Give the Lord something to work with. Many of us have testimonies of how we sent out these applications or we do this thing and we leave it in the spirit realm. And God was able to work on our behalf because he had something to work with. So God needs something to work with. And in this case, in the word of God, we see that the prophet recognize that the axe had a handle and he was going to use something of that same significance to bring back the axe this might seem strange to you but there's a lot of strange or odd stories in the bible like there is one when jesus healed the blind man you know and for those who are politically correct and uh, well like to be reformed, we would imagine that Jesus would do like this. That's how we envision it is. But the word of God says he spit on the ground. You can't spit dignified on the ground. Where do you get that from? You understand me? Spit on the 
Brother Brown, okay? That is what happened. Make a put a name on it. Uh, yes, that's what Jesus did, all right? And then there's another strange odd story about this king. I remember at one stage, he put his garments on another guy and going to the battle, but he should have been there, you know? And, yeah, and when the oppositions came and the enemy fighting realized it's not the king, this guy, this king thought he got away. And this is the heat of battle, so he was not in the periphery of what's going on. And the word of God says, a, a soldier, just take an arrow. At that time, they didn't know anything about DNA or anything like that. But it looked as though this arrow had the guy's, the, the, the king's DNA. He just shoot an arrow in the air. And the arrow come and find, he, and find the space between the armor. Bam! And that was the end of him. Just a little space. Because you have armor all over. But that little area that was unprotected, the arrow was able to find it. Strange things in the word of God. No? But there are always lessons for us. And the one that I love with Elisha, when the guys came and said, go up thou bald head. You know? And we know what happened. As it's, some people would know prophets were not meant to be bald. They always had their head of fear. But remember, Elisha was a farmer. So he came up a little different than the others. So he had a bald head. And they, was, and they were telling him, go up. So they would have known about his mentor, Elijah, being elevated to the heavenly host. And they was fretting him, you know. And you see what happened. The word of God says he cursing. It didn't mean that he used expletives, you know. You know? That's what curse in the Bible refers to. That is what we do in Beijing, but that is not what we refer to. All right? He pronounced a, a, a destructive means of words on them. He asked God to deal with them. And the word of God said that some beers came out. I, one time I used to wonder why it was she beers and why it was the male men beers. But then if you check near National Geographic, you recognize that the female beers are very aggressive, especially with their family. So God wanted to get over a message that don't mess with a man of God. So he used what was there at the time. So there are strange stories. Even the Apostle Paul getting shipwrecked and then being bitten by a snake and the others being as if he would die. No, he lived. He lived. He didn't die. So there, there are strange things in the Bible, just like this one, whereby the man of God uses another stick and the man showed him, and he just threw the stick in the water. And in the word, I like what the King James Version said. It said the ass did swim. Those are very nice words, you know. Very Shakespearean words, you know. Very literature words. They make good conversation. The ass did swim. All it means is that the ass flowed. What a phenomenon it was. I think about it. Let me tell you something about Elisha. This was such a wonderful experience. In modern days, we have ma magicians. Some of you might know some of these names. Houdini. You can write it up and look it up. David Copperfield, you might be familiar with. David Blaine is another guy. And then there's the other guy named Chris Angel. They do a lot of magician tricks. Elijah didn't pull a rabbit out of a hat or nothing like that. He was a prophet. He wanted to demonstrate real truth to a guy he was now passing on his faith to. A guy he was now mentoring. He wanted his man to see that God can give him back his cutting edge. And the same, the same thing that he had in his hand, a stick, a handle, is what the man of God was used to bring back his cutting edge. You might think that you're insignificant, that there's nothing in your life that's worth fighting for. You might say, well, I will never ever be close to God again. I want to tell you that you're wrong. You might say that, that you can never receive his blessing because we don't know what happened in the past. And that God can never use a person like you. That you're just one a significant tiny person. You won't even say, well, like, you've messed up. I want to let you know something about this story. It doesn't say that you need to have better music in the church to restore your spiritual passion. You know that? It never said. It doesn't say that the man had to go and have an experience, although that might be helpful. 
you know, some of us like a lot of experience. He didn't say I add more to his schedule, and sometimes we can get really busy, especially in the work of God. Yes, they had a meeting from 9.30 to just about 1.30, and then just about near 1, and then they had another meeting from 2 o'clock. So we can get real busy with the schedule. It doesn't say that we need a book on something like seven habits of spiritual development. And another thing, we like, we like a lot of steps. So seven steps for a better you. We like a lot of steps. You know that? Everything is a step. Five steps to this. Seven steps to that. We like a lot of these things. Mind you, they will keep you fit. I tell you that. But they might be helpful. But real spiritual renewal happens when we anticipate what God is about to do. And what he does best is to impart his knowledge and his wisdom in our heart. So God could have placed the axe in a man's hand, but instead, the prophet had to acquire it. In other words, we all need each other, okay? We all need each other. Do I have any witnesses this morning? We all need each other in the scheme of things. I just want to close with something I call the three R's. They're designed to help you. The first R is to remember. Remember what it was like when you were close to God. Think about how good it felt, the good times. And remember how far you have fallen. The next R is repent. Return from your ways. Take steps to get back to Christ. You need to cut out the bitterness, cut out the sin, cut out the pain. Return to God. And now we come to that same one, return. Get back to your devotion. Get back to your life with Jesus. Return to do the things you did at first. And the cross, as we commemorate communion this morning, it proves how much Jesus loves us. He had a spear put into his side. He had a crown of thorns on his head. He had nails in his hand. He had nails in his feet. But he wanted to make sure that he take away our sins, that there was nothing standing in the way between us and him. So this morning, I want to declare to you that Christ is your miracle. If you have lost your cutting edge, Christ is your miracle. And who I know that? The word of God says that he is a way maker. And he also is the maker of heaven and earth. Do I have a witness this morning? Oh, praise the Lord. The word of God declares that he is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of God declares that he is the son of God. He is the God-man. He is the humble servant. The word of God declares that he is a good shepherd. That he is the prince of peace. That he is a wonderful counselor, hallelujah. That he's the lion of the tribe of Judah. That he is the resurrection and the life. That he is the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And finally, he is the king of kings and lord of lords. So I declare to you this morning that if you have lost your cutting edge, it is time you need a miracle. And I want to tell you that that miracle is the Lord. Christ Jesus, may God bless you. Oh, praise.